Hello, my name is Scott Greer and I am the End Use Manager for Industrial Coatings for Eckerd America. One of the many questions that we receive are from formulators wanting to use aluminum pigments in water-based coating systems. This is very achievable with some considerations. Formulators that are familiar with aluminum pigments in solvent-based coating systems sometimes struggle with the transition to water-based coating systems and there are good reasons for those struggles. This commentated presentation is meant to present why considerations need to occur for water-based coating systems and what those considerations are in terms of formulation design to achieve brilliant metallic effect in water-based coating systems. This is the main reaction that we need to understand as we formulate water-based coatings that contain aluminum pigments. The hydrogen 2 evolution is the gassing issue that we are looking to avoid. With careful consideration, we will preserve the protection on the aluminum flake so that the hydrogen evolution will not occur. Much like the corrosion reaction, once this reaction starts and begins to take place, we cannot stop or control it, so it is vital that we keep this reaction from starting in our coating system in the first place. Let's look at the reaction in depth to understand what is happening. When we look at the H2 gas evolution, we're reminded that when we have seen this in practice with unnerving results, this causes the pails to swell and will cause lids to pop off and scare pretty much in the vicinity where this is happening. The other part of the equation that needs to be understood is the aluminum oxide resultant, as this will cause our aluminum pigment to be much less bright and less brilliant than intended. This will detract from what we want from our metallic effect in terms of sparkle, brilliance, and sheen. Let's take a look at what is being done to the aluminum metallic flake to protect it from the interaction with water so that the hydrogen gas evolution does not begin to occur. There are two possibilities that keep the aluminum from reacting with the water. The first, or top example, is called passivation. In this case, the pigment is coated with corrosion inhibitors to keep the water interaction from taking place with the aluminum pigment. Please note, there is a recommended pH range noted. We will discuss this in detail very soon. The second protection possibility is the encapsulation of a metal oxide, or a silica layer, on the surface of the aluminum flake. Note that there is a higher pH recommendation for encapsulation in number two versus the passivation example in number one. Again, we will discuss these very soon. Now that we've discussed the two possible methods of protecting the aluminum flake from interaction with the water, our main focus of consideration is focusing on preserving these protectants on the surface of the aluminum flake surface. Anything that interrupts this protectant on the aluminum flake will result in water's interaction with the aluminum flake and gassing will result. When we look at our formulations, these four areas could potentially damage the protection layers of the aluminum flake, causing gassing as the water interacts with the aluminum. These four areas need to be considered to ensure proper aluminum flake protection. The amine selection or neutralization agent that you're using in your formulation will matter. Normally, a lot of times, uh, we would use the uh, ammonia as our neutralization agent. Ammonia is very, very aggressive and will act as a stripping agent from the two protectant methods that we discussed in the earlier slide. So the first thing that I always uh, recommend is are you using ammonia as your neutralization agent? If you are, then you need to stop now, please. Um, triethylamine, DMEA, AMP95 are usually my recommended go-to amines slash neutralization agents. Ammonia is a bad actor for water-based metallic systems. I understand it's commonly used. I understand why it's commonly used. It's very affordable and it normally works well with all sorts of water-based pigmented systems. 
but not aluminum pigment based systems. That's my number one main go-to recommendation on this. Number two, as you saw, the pH ranges that were listed earlier, those need to be very closely watched out that you don't exceed without proper lab testing of your coating system versus your um, pigmented flake. Okay, your aluminum pigmented flake needs to adhere to those pH levels as a function of high pH. Again, we get that um, stripping off of the aluminum flake to bare aluminum flake. Then you will have that reaction with water. Then you will start to evolve hydrogen gassing and you will damage the brilliance that you see from your aluminum pigment because you will not get aluminum you will get the aluminum oxide resultant much less brilliant much less bright not the desirable concept okay the third thing is shear and incorporation of flakes okay this is our recommended procedure to predisperse the aluminum pigment prior to adding to the finished paint systems this allows us to disperse the metallic pigment without having the pigment undergo unnecessary shear. This shear could potentially fracture the protectant layer that would cause premature gassing in our system. Okay, So as in the earlier example with pH and ammonia specifically, as those can eliminate our protectant layer, if we highly shear or highly mix our pigments they can fracture those layers which will be a bridge pathway of water to the bare aluminum and all the reaction would start kicking off at that point so whether you chemically strip the protectants off or you mechanically fracture the protectants off both cases need to be observed here in our slide that we recommend normally to customers and to partners we want one part aluminum paste one to two parts of solvent 0.5 to 1.0 percent wetting additives on total formulation and we also give some guidance on solvents that we can use um, some folks will use water as a solvent um, a couple of wetting agents that we recommend you know you put those together please note the avoid high shear forces you just want the material moving around in your mixing vessel don't need the high speed donut don't need the rolling donut don't want to build any heat just it just needs to move for about 15 to 20 minutes to complete the loop on this procedure this is a simple drawdown to illustrate when predispersion is complete and ready to be incorporated into the final um, coatings batch Okay. Everyone will start on the right hand side where you see the pore dispersion, we see seeds, we see lumps, it just doesn't want to flow, it doesn't want to level, it doesn't want to really do anything. As a function of time, solvent selection, and whether or not you chose to use some dispersing agent, you will move from the right to the left. A nice looking, just a nice, you know, no streaks, no cat claws, no chunks, you know, everything does down. If you do one and you do one of these dispersion checks and you see lumps and, and chunks, give it, a, give it a little more time. If you didn't throw in a small amount of a dispersing aid, that might, um, that will make you quicker as well. Solvent selection will also make you quicker as well. So, um, but you do want in all cases, regardless of if you use dispersing agent or not, regardless of the solvent that you chose to predisperse with, low shear material moving only no rolling donut not you know paddle blades no no blades with teeth no cows blades are recommended those kinds of activity as we wrap up here with a wrap up slide of points there are basically four things to consider when making aluminum pigment effects in water based coatings paint systems Please note that all these considerations hinge on keeping the protection intact on the aluminum pigment that keeps the reaction between the aluminum and the water from occurring. Numbers one through three are the largest considerations. You know, as we've discussed, the neutralization slash amine agent, 
ammonia is not recommended too aggressive these it will it will strip the protecting layer off amp95 dmea tea are all good actors and winners with these concepts ph of your coating system very important passivated systems seven to eight encapsulated aluminum flake systems eight to eight five if you want to go higher than that or you need to go higher than that knowing that we deliberately will put the pH as high as we can knowing that that neutralization agent will leach over time um, always test always test with your raw materials and these pigments at how high you can maintain that with that hot box stability testing okay just be very careful when you open it if you're going higher than these recommended levels when you open that can be very careful as if you have any H2 gas it will pop the lid off when you try to open it so be very careful please okay shear rates high shear is a bad actor you know the predispersing with low speed with a nice solvent with a um, dispersing aid is recommended I bring up number four because it's been noted I would say 98% of all of the problems and recommendations that we've we've given to customers and partners no, number one two and, and number one and two knock out most of them number three we have seen those before and lagging far behind would be the number four concept of keep in mind that your acid number of the resin in your coating system may be too aggressively high okay and you may also see that stripping case like we see in ammonia occurring this happens very infrequently, but I did want to point it out as this is kind of a all-encompassing concept. Okay, but between these four points, we've had very good success advising customers and partners about how to successfully get a brighter waterborne metallic aluminum pigment containing systems and b um, keep from that gas evolution of occurring. This concludes our discussion on this topic. If you need specialized assistance, please contact us and someone from the team will assist you as we can. Thank you for your time and interest in Eckert materials and products, and we look forward to partnering with you soon.